Hey everybody, welcome to Eagles Game Plan presented by Toyota. I am John Clark along with Mike Quick and Ike Reese. Birds trying to go 4 and 0 for the first time since this guy was playing 18 years ago. That would be great. I don't think they're going to sack Trevor Lawrence as much as they got to Carson Wentz. Nine times. Trevor's only been sacked twice, but how about nine times on Carson Wentz? Yeah, I mean, great job by this defense, taking advantage of a banged-up offensive line. The coverage mirroring the rush up front, forcing Wentz to hold the ball. That led to a great day for our defensive line. And you got to love what's happening on the offensive side of the ball. If you look at Jalen Hurts and his progression, you have to really appreciate the work that he's put in, and it really shows. He does so many things now that veteran quarterbacks are able to do. It's because of the work that he's putting in. Elon Hurts, most total yards by an Eagles quarterback in the first three games of a season. That's saying a lot with Donovan McNabb, Michael Vick, and all these guys. How about Devontae Smith? A career-high 169 receiving yards. Let's get some tape study with Fran Duffy and the receivers coach Aaron Moorhead, presented by Chickies and Pete's. Please be joined this week on Tape Study presented by Chickies and Pete's by Eagles wide receivers coach Aaron Moorhead. Coach, I feel like we got to start talking with Devontae Smith. Uh, this is an outstanding performance from the second year wide receiver, and we'll go through one of his biggest catches of the day. Yeah, Devontae had a great game. You know, really uh, came out determined, and, uh, you know, it showed from the beginning of the game and, and, and went all the way through the fourth quarter. But, uh, the guy, the guy's playing great football right now, and we got to continue to, uh, to to feed him the ball along with the rest of the guys. Yeah, so two 40-plus yard catches for Devonte in this game. This was the second one, second quarter. Take us through what you like more about this play, because I went back and forth. I don't know if I like the route or the catch more. I, I guess it's got to be the finish. Uh, got to be the finish. You know, you got it when you when you jump over two guys, you get to you, the the finish is all all uh, you know you really want to emphasize but but you can't you can't go without talking about the route the stick at the top against Fuller right here does a great job of of really just sticking his foot making Fuller take that one step outside and then when he opens his hip and he sticks his foot in the ground and runs by him now we got a chance to get the ball downfield Jalen saw that and then you know not to go unnoticed is Quez on the backside with his speed uh, this safety on the back side over here, McCain, has to respect Quez's speed. And so Quez carries this safety, and, and he, he holds him just long enough for Jalen to be able to deliver that throw where the safety can't make a play down the field. And just the, going back to that finish by Devontae, that, that, is that something that you feel is coachable, or guys are just like born, they wake up in the morning and they are there able to do that? There's a little bit of both, you know, but at the same time, it, of course, we drill everything, you know, but Devontae has shown that since high school through college, that's what he does. He's able to high point the football. Um, all of our guys have a true knack for high pointing the football. Um, Quez has shown it in games. AJ's shown it in games. Smitty hasn't had as many of these in games for whatever reason, but when you start to look at it, it's starting to come out this year. A little more opportunity to do that, and, and you know this was on full display here in this play. So a little bit later in the game, uh, Devontae gets another explosive play in the pass game. This time out of empty, where yeah. you've got Jalen Hurts in the backfield all by himself, Devontae in the slot. Coach, going into week four, Devontae leads the NFL catches, yards, and first downs from empty sets. What is it about that kind of look that helps Devontae have success and just take us through this play? Well, I think, you know, it, you got to choose. Are you going to play in zone? Are you going to play in man? We got a lot of options. Yep. You know, you've got Kenny out here who's a viable threat as a wide receiver. Obviously, the three receivers we have in the game between Zach and and AJ and Dallas, uh, and then and then Devontae over here. So they got to choose. Are you going to be man? Are you going to be zone? Are you going to double somebody? And then Jalen has to dissect it all. So, um, you know, we had a good job here of, of a man of a man play. We had just a basic mesh call. And uh, Zach Pascal is going to mesh here for, for Devontae and, and does a great job of just affecting this guy slightly. That's all he's got to do is just affect him slightly. And, and he just moves fuller a little bit there. Devontae does a great job of catching and, and doing what he does naturally, which is catch, burst. You get a nice block up the field here by Dallas and a nice block up the field here by AJ that springs this for another 10 to 12 yards. So a great uh, executed play there by the offense and a good ball. Uh, by Jalen there, and, and, and Devontae's able to do the rest. So uh, pretty pretty good play. When you can throw the ball five yards down the field and get a 40-yard gain, uh, that, that's something that any coach in America would love to do at any level. So uh, we, we, we did this here, had a great execution, and uh, you know the guys 
the guys really stepped up and did some really good things in this game. You mentioned just the value of yards after catch, and it feels like all of these guys in this offense have that ability in their own specific skill set to be able to create with the ball in their hands. How important is that for an NFL offense? Absolutely, uh, it's critical, you know, because defenses are good. They play different coverages, and there's times you just got to let your playmakers make plays. You saw that with Dallas on the touchdown, yep. where he was able to run with it. AJ's had a number of run after the catches. We've seen it with Quez over the years. Pascal will get to see a little more as this year goes on, but he's done that throughout his career. So just excited. And even you saw Grant Calcaterra do it on his catch. So, I mean, there's a lot of guys that we have a lot of faith in that can do some run after the catch and, and it makes it easier on everybody. And the line doesn't have to hold as long. Jalen just has to put the ball where it's supposed to be and guys, you know, do what they do what they've been doing. A lot of them since they were little kids. So fast forward a little bit now, we get the, the touchdown from Jalen to, to A.J. Brown, again out of an empty set with Jalen in the backfield by himself. Take us through what makes this play work so well. You're getting the defense spread out, first of all. So, so it's a good picture for Jalen to see where he thinks he wants to go with the ball. Uh, he, he looks out there, makes sure everybody's on the same page. And then, he, and then A.J., you know, when you look at it, this is a special first touchdown for him. You know, he gets to get out there. He was super excited about it. But just running a simple slant, he gets in front of the DB, uses his big body to shield him. Jalen puts the ball in his body for him. AJ makes a nice catch with his hands and is able to use all that 225 pounds to get himself into the end zone. But a really good job here by Devontae of clearing out this inside guy right there. And a good job by AJ and a good throw by Jalen and, 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 and a good job getting it into the end zone. A really well executed play by the offense right here. I feel like a lot of people might look at this ball from Jalen and say, oh, he threw it behind the receiver. But with the corner playing front side shoulder, that's exactly where that ball needs it to be, It had to right? be. And he trusts AJ that he's going to make that play. And AJ's made this play over and over since he's been here uh, in practice and games. So uh, it was just it was, it was a great executed play uh, in, in, in a really timely play for our offense in the game. We kind of needed it. We were getting going. And this was kind of where I think things took off for us. So it was a really good job there uh, by the whole offense. Eagles game plan is brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers, proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles, Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy, Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi, PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Dogs are hungry! Tiptoeing in my Jordan, you feel me? Nothing like hand steam in the rain. How do you know that? Film. Hey, right, gotta make them pay now. Gotta make them pay. Oh, imagine being a defensive coordinator trying to defend this Eagles offense with those receivers and Dallas Goddard with the touchdown. What are you seeing on that touchdown? Great call. Well, Dallas Goddard, is, he's so good in the screen game. But if you watch this, it's off of play action. And when the play action fake, you're going to see the linebackers flow right away. Watch how Isaac Sayamalo sifts through all the traffic, gets in position, along with Jason Kelsey, getting in, in position in front of Dallas Goddard to make the blocks downfield. And it's just a perfect screen pass. I love the play call in this situation, but I also love the execution by these guys. And then when Goddard gets the football, all he has to do is beat one man. And I don't know if that safety really wanted to make that tackle, but you see that little sidestep by Dallas Goddard, and then he just gets into the end zone. He's really good at running with the football in his hands. Very patient as well, Dallas, on those screens. Most tight ends aren't patient. They want to get the ball and get the going. Dallas does a great job of being patient to let his blockers get in front of him. But what I like about this play and how it can be beneficial against the Jags, the Jags have a very athletic, fast defense. They want to get after the quarterback. And we used the defense's aggressiveness against them. This is where the screen play comes in handy. It's a difficult play to stop when you're an attacking style defense. The Eagles, if, they, if this is well placed, it can be a big play for him again this Sunday. Yeah, and the Jags, their defense has only given up 10 points the last two games. Nobody has more takeaways and they're giving up the fewest rushing yards. This defense is pretty good. Let's get some enemy intel with Greg Cosell, presented by Golden Nugget Jewelers. When you pop in the tape of this defense, 
It is multiple, both with their fronts, it is fast at the linebacker position, and they play a lot of different coverages depending on the situation. This is not an easy defense to play against, and speed is the big factor because that's very important when you play against Jalen Hurts and this Eagles offense. Now, I mentioned the fronts. They are very multiple depending upon down and distance. When you get to third down, they tend to have a certain group on the field, and that group is very, very good. What they do is they have Allen and Walker, the rookie, on the outside, usually, and they have Smoot and Arden Key inside. But they'll do a lot of things. Key moves around, Smoot moves around. And last week against the Chargers on a third and long, what they did was they ran a long stunt. They had Dwayne Smoot line up, basically at a D-tackle position, and he would run a long stunt behind Key and Trayvon Walker, the rookie. And the offensive line for the Chargers did not handle it. Now it was third and long, so Justin Herbert needed to stay in the pocket, and he did not find anyone to throw the ball to, and Smoot made the sack and forced a fumble that the Jaguars recovered. So you'll see that kind of thing. But the key thing to remember when thinking about this defense is all the different looks that they give you. It's very much predicated on down and distance. So this is a defense that's actually in some ways made to play against the Eagles offense. That doesn't mean, of course, that they will stop them, but it will be a challenge for the Eagles offense this particular game. All right, yeah, Jacksonville has an aggressive defensive front, happens to be coached by his former teammate, Mike Caldwell. You had a little Mike and Ike back then as well. What are you seeing from Mike Caldwell? <laughs> but they haven't faced a guy like Jalen Hurts yet. Well, listen, Zeke, as we affectionately called him back in the day, has his guys playing outstanding football. And you're right, the quarterbacks that they faced in Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, and even Justin Herbert last week, who was banged up, these guys don't possess the mobility that Jalen Hurts can threaten the defense with. And when you have to face a quarterback that can beat you with his arm, with the weapons that he has on the outside, and beat you with his legs, it puts a defense in a quandary, and you don't know what to call. Am I going to call man versus this offense, or am I going to call zone. Jalen Hurts is the X factor every week for a defensive coordinator because you're going to have to devote extra players and extra schemes to making sure he doesn't beat you, particularly on third down. But you got to think about this too. The worst game that Jalen Hurts has had as a pro is probably against Tampa Bay. In that Tampa Bay game last year, and where does Mike Caldwell come from? Oh, Tampa, Bay, Tampa Bay, Todd now. Bowles, and a lot of the things that Todd Bowles did in that game, I'm sure that Zeke will try and do in this game to try and slow up all of the things that are that's happening now with Jalen Hurts. Back goes Wentz. He's looking. He is sacked. They got him. Sack number one. He's hit again. They've got him there. Sack number two. And they've hit him again. They tripped up. And there's sack number four. He starts to run. He fumbles the football. I think the Eagles are on it. They are. He loses it. That is another fumble by Carson Wentz. And they've got him again. Seven sacks. Sack number eight. He's eight sacks. Again. They've got him again. And that would be sack number nine. Wow, how about that performance by the defensive line? Brandon Graham gets his first NFC Defensive Player of the Week. They were all over it. Nine sacks, 16 or 17 quarterback hits. But it's not just about that defensive line, right, Ike? Um, no doubt, man. I'm loving what I'm seeing, Q and uh, John, from this defense. When you look at how the secondary and the pass rush is sort of marriage together. You take a look here on third down. This happened on more than one occasion. Washington's going to come out in sort of a set where you can almost tell it pre-snap, this is going to get either bunch routes or some type of crossing patterns, call it the mesh routes, where you can either get confusion or a pick route, wink, wink, and now you find the offensive player wide open. But what I like about what the Eagles are doing is their communication is starting to pick up and you're starting to notice it because there's a lack of big plays available. As you see these crossing routes come, Kaiser White and James Bradbury are going to pass off these routes. They hug up to their man, and what this allows is for the pass rush to get to Carson Wentz. He has to pump fake, tuck the ball down, and then the next thing you know, Brandon Graham, Hassan Reddick is there 
for a big sack there. The pass coverage on the back end allowed the pass rush up front to take advantage of the offensive line and get to Carson Wentz nine times. Would you say 17 hits on the quarterback? Woo, that's a lot. They call that a party at the quarterback. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Trevor Lawrence, I mean, he's been on the move a lot. He's mobile, he can move, and that's been effective. Very efficient, only one interception, and he's got six touchdowns. More enemy intel with Greg Cosell, presented by Golden Nugget Jewelers. When you pop on the tape of Trevor Lawrence, one thing you immediately see is the improvement. You see quicker feet on his drop and his set in the pocket. You see a shorter stride on his throws. He needs to be able to execute Doug Peterson's rhythm and timing passing game. Now we have a three game sample. We don't know what will happen in the future, but this is what we have now. And there are some really good examples of Lawrence's ability as he's improving. And one struck me last week. It's a basic concept that every team runs. We call it a high-low concept. Now you're going to see Christian Kirk go in motion across the formation and he's going to be the low receiver in this high-low concept, and Zay Jones will be the high receiver. Now, you wanna hit the high receiver ideally here. So what happens with Lawrence? He drops back, he gets a little squeezed in the pocket because he has to wait for the defender, the underneath defender to declare. So he has a throwing window. So the pocket gets squeezed, Lawrence stays there firm and delivers to Jones for 14 yards. In the course of a game, it does not seem like a big play but it's a very good example of Lawrence incremental improvement. One other area that really has stood out through three games, how good Lawrence has been in the red zone. He has the second most red zone touchdown passes in the league going into week four. And here's another play that I loved. Again, it's Kirk in motion from the outside into the backfield. And they want to work a two man route combination with tight end Evan Ingram and Kirk. So what happens is Ingram runs inside, the linebacker takes him, and now you have Kirk out of the backfield versus the slot corner outside, but he's out leveraged the slot corner because what's going to happen is Kirk will run what we call a follow route. Beautifully designed, a setup throw for Lawrence. So you're defining the reads and the throws for Lawrence. You're giving him defined looks. He's so much more comfortable. He's playing the game quicker, but he's not hurrying now. He looks composed and poised in the pocket. So this is an offense that's developing. Now the offensive line, that will be the big challenge as we know against an Eagles defensive line. But this is an improving offense and Trevor Lawrence is playing the best football of his young career. Hey, welcome back to Eagles Game Plan presented by a Toyota. This is a pretty tough matchup against the Jaguars. They only won three games all of last year. Doug Peterson's already got them winning two games. So what are you looking at as one of your key matchups? Well, I got to start with our defensive line going up against that offensive line. Now, Jacksonville's offensive line has been revamped. They brought in former pro bowler Brandon Scherr from Washington. He and Fletcher, they've had one-on-one -on -one battles in years past. So that'll be something great to look at. And the fact that the Eagles dominated Washington's offensive line last week and part, Carson didn't have anywhere to go with the ball. I would imagine Trevor Lawrence is going to try to get the ball out of his hands as quick as possible. Guys, the Eagles lead the league in average yards per reception. Look at how these receivers now are getting hot at the right time. Jalen Hurts throwing the football. The perfect matchup for me, watching the Eagles wide receivers work against that secondary, those defensive backs. Jalen Hurts is going to give these guys opportunities to make plays. The 50-50 balls that they're winning on now. Well, that secondary, they're not really good at playing those balls. That's where I think the Eagles will have the edge in this football game. Eagles have the best offense in the NFL, averaging close to 450 yards a game. We will see if they can get it done against a good Jaguars defense. Enjoy the game, everybody. Thanks for watching Eagles Game Plan, presented by Toyota. Eagles Game Plan is brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers, proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy. Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi. PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why.